And just so you know, my life savings was in that car back there. Welcome back, Autobots, to Decepticons, and everything in between to Tales of Production, the series where I take a look at the production of the various Transformers movies and tell you some interesting stories that went down. Today's is going to cover the biggest red herring in all of Bayformers, that being the 2013 Chevy Sonic RS rally car that appeared in Transformers Age of Extinction. Now, for those of you who may not remember, during Age of Extinction's production, us fans for the longest time thought that the Sonic RS would end up being a new character that would join the Autobot cast. And when the film finally came out, at first we all thought for certain that the rally car was indeed a Transformer, since when it made its first appearance on screen, no driver was present. However, this illusion would be shattered after the rally car smacked a cemetery wind soldier square in the face, since as soon as it landed, a person was seen in the driver's seat. And shortly after, we would learn that the driver of the Sonic RS was Shane Dyson, the boyfriend of Tessa Yeager. After this reveal, the hopes of those who still thought the car could still end up being a Transformer would be crushed, since it would later be destroyed by Lockdown after he threw his grenade at the humans. But despite all this, the final nail in the coffin to confirm that the Sonic RS was never meant to be a Transformer was when Shane said this, And just so you know, my life savings was in that car back there. Though we know for a fact now that the Sonic RS was never meant to be a Transformer, the timeline of events from June 12, 2013, which was the day director Michael Bay posted a mysterious image of the Sonic RS on his official website, to June 27, 2014, which is when the film officially came out and where we all learned that the RS was not a Transformer, had some serious speculatory ups and downs. Us fans got evidence to support the Sonic RS being a Transformer, just to later get evidence countering what we believed. And this cycle of evidence and counter evidence just continued all the way up to the film's release. So without further ado, allow me to take you guys to the year of 2013 and to put you into the minds of us Transformers fans of the day we got this image reveal. The date was June 12, 2013. Michael Bay's official website was updated with an image of a Chevy Sonic RS that was modified to be a rally car. The image spread like wildfire to several fan sites where fans were quick to jump on the idea that this would be a new character. Some speculated that the Royal Purple logo had a deeper meaning, from it either referring to the color of the Decepticon badge, to even referring to Galvatron. While fans speculated if the rally car was an Autobot or a Decepticon, there were those who were skeptical if it even was a Transformer at all. Calling back to a October 16, 2012 spoiler TV rumor, where allegedly Transformers 4 would have two new leads, a female lead that would be a high school senior, and a male lead that would be a Texas race car driver. However, the skeptics would fall on deaf ears because ever since May 28, 2013, Age of Extinction's marketing campaign was on absolute fire. Every day between the 28th to the 31st saw new image reveals of the vehicles that would star in the film. It all started on the 28th with images of a black Bugatti Veyron and a green Corvette Stingray. The 29th showed fans their first look at Optimus Prime's brand spanking new vehicle mode. The 30th showed off Bumblebee's new Camaro alt mode which was now surprisingly mostly black. And lastly, on the final day of May, Michael Bay would show off a big green Oshkosh military vehicle, saying that it was going to be Autobot Hound. June 7th, 2013 would have another mysterious vehicle reveal. This time it was a 2013 Lamborghini Aventador. And upon its reveal, most fans speculated that it would be the Cybertronian bounty hunter Lockdown. The hype was definitely real. And so it's no wonder when the Sonic RS was revealed a mere five days later that almost everyone thought that it was going to be a Transformer. And only a few hours later, their beliefs would be reinforced when photos and videos from the set emerged showing the RS driving past some armed vehicles. However, when June 14th and 15th came around, some fans started to reevaluate their stance on the RS being a Transformer, since images popped up showing the main leads riding around in the RS. Despite this, many fans still had hope for the Sonic RS to be an Autobot, while others started to reconsider what they thought about the October 12th rumor. 
Information on the RS would dry up until July 5th, 2013. Michael Bay on his official website would host a poll asking fans what their favorite Transformer was so far, with images of all the vehicles that he revealed since May. For fans, this was the confirmation they needed to confirm that the RS was indeed going to be a Transformer. And so speculation picked back up on who it could possibly be, and what faction it would be a part of. Smokescreen was the most popular speculation. However, this newfound hope of the Sonic RS being a Transformer would be crushed a little over 10 months later. On April 24, 2014, Toys R Us computer listings surfaced showing a handful of product codes for upcoming figures. The listing for Transformers Movie 4 Platinum Edition Breakout Scene had an image of a redeco thrilling 30 Deluxe Class skids attached to it. Upon its reveal, fans were able to point out that the skids was recolored to look like the Chevy Sonic. At this point, many fans lost all hope that the Sonic would end up being a Transformer, with most of them correctly speculating that this figure was just a case of Hasbro taking a vehicle that starred in the film and making a Transformer out of it. Just like they did with Landmine from the 2007 toy line, Brimstone from the Revenge of the Fallen toy line, and Roller from the Dark of the Moon toy line, just to name a few. Despite this, some fans would still try to hold on to hope by speculating that this image was just merely a placeholder, but the general consensus among among fans was that the RS would not be a Transformer. However, this consensus would start to change just six days later. On April 30th, 2014, Chevy dropped their promotional ad for Age of Extinction. The focus of the ad was to show off the Chevrolet vehicles in all their glory. Among them, of course, was the Sonic RS. The famous Transformers fan site TFW2005 would report on this news and leave a cryptic message for fans saying, This video was quality enough to notice certain things that were previously hard to see. For example, take a very good look at the Chevrolet Sonic RS. We won't say any more. Enjoy. Fans would analyze the heck out of this promotional video, and would find out that no driver was seen in the RS. Fans did not know what to think, especially after their hopes were crushed just a mere six days earlier. All they knew was that all bets were off. The Chevy Sonic had to be a Transformer. 15 days later on May 15th, 2014, the theatrical trailer for Age of Extinction would drop and fans would go hog wild over it. The RS would have a short segment in the trailer smacking a guy square in the face. Fans would speculate that the rally car had to be a Decepticon, since the impact would have surely killed that soldier. As this speculation continued, May 27, 2014 would eventually roll around. On this day, fans would get a chance to meet Bumblebee, Crosshairs, and the rally car up close and personal at the Indianapolis 500 Speedway. Since the rally car was in the same lineup as B and Crosshairs, fans still speculated that the RS was definitely going to be a Transformer. And on June 10th, 2014, the hype would start to fizzle out since Paramount would drop a TV spot for Age of Extinction on their official YouTube channel. The TV spot had some never-before-seen shots of the RS in it. One new shot was of Shane driving the vehicle. This started to make fans wonder if the RS was really going to be a Transformer. This reconsideration among fans would become more prominent just two days later, when TFW2005 reported that Hotshot could be a possible name for the Sonic RS, after the name was found via Big Bad Toy Store's Wave 3 Deluxe pre-order listings. Though some fans liked the idea of the RS potentially being Hotshot, the majority disagreed with this idea, firmly believing that the rally car will just end up being a rally car driven by Shane. And unfortunately, their beliefs would be proven just one week later. On June 19th, 2014, the Meet Shane featurette would drop. In it, actor Jack Rayner would talk about who Shane is and what he stands for. In the interview, he would explain how his character is a race car driver who wants to make it big. And throughout the interview, he is seen driving the Sonic, with it even being in the background of his interview. This destroyed any and all hope for the RS being a Transformer. And three days later on June 21st, 2014, official product reveals were shown to the public where fans learned that the Chevy Sonic RS was getting two brand new figures, in addition to being designated as Rollbar. Despite how exciting these reveals were, it didn't bring back any hope for those who thought the RS would be a Transformer, and further cemented that Rollbar would just be a toy-only character. Six days later on June 27th, 2014, the film finally dropped. And, just like everyone expected, the Sonic RS was just a rally car and not a Transformer. Now, though the Sonic RS was not a Transformer, this wouldn't stop Hasbro from making a few figures out of it. The first of which was part of the Platinum Edition Breakout Battle box set. 
the rally car would be designated as the Heroic Autobot Roll Bar, and unfortunately would just be a redeco of the Generations Thrilling 30 skids. Roll Bar came packed with a more screen accurate redeco of Evasion Mode Optimus Prime, and a redeco of Dark of the Moon Deluxe Class Crankcase as a Viacon, whose vehicle mode was based on Cemetery Wind's modified 2007 Cadillac Escalade ESV's GMT 926s. The Robar toy from the Breakout Battle set would later be released in Japan as a single-carded Toys R Us exclusive. The final figure Robar would get would be his gimmicky one-step changer. And this time around, he didn't look like skids from the IDW comics. But now, for some inexplicable reason, his robot mode would be based off of Expron from Robots in Disguise 2001. Now, the last and final thing that I want to cover is why no driver appeared in the Sonic RS when it first appeared. And unfortunately, that's a question only Michael Bay knows the answer to. But what I can give an answer on is a possible in-universe explanation to why no driver appeared. And well, if we take a look at the RS in this shot, we can see that the driver's seat has been reclined all the way back. Now, why would this be the case? Well, if we look at the shots before, we can see that Cemetery Wind has swarmed the Jaeger family home. Shane would have easily seen the private military on his girlfriend's doorstep when driving up to the property, and so I believe that Shane reclined his seat all the way back to protect himself in case the soldiers would open fire on him. This makes sense since he would have more protection hiding behind a metal door than an open window. And just like that, now you know the story behind the biggest red herring in all of Bayformers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Tales of Production playlist for some more awesome stories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my wonderful Patreons and channel members for supporting my channel. You guys are the reason why Theremus has continued to get bigger and better, so a big fat thank you to all of you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving a like rating or hitting that subscribe button below. And with that said, hit that outro.